Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new spoiler TV review of the brand new episode of the Amazon Prime original TV show, Invincible. Before I get into episode five of Invincible, please hit that thumbs up button if you're new to the channel. Thank you guys so much. That's the best way to support Max Talks movies. Also, comment down below your spoiler thoughts of Invincible. Is this your favorite episode, least favorite episode? How excited are you for these last three episodes coming in the next couple of weeks? Let's have a fun discussion. I respond to every comment. So definitely comment down below in the comment section down below. Also, if you're new to the channel, I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, streaming platform reviews, and movie rankings. If you like any one of those things, like these reviews of Invincible, please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. If you want to follow me on social media, that's in the description down below. And let's get into my thoughts. So I was originally, and I said in my re my spoiler review of episodes one through four, that I would stop and wait until the whole season is done and then do a whole spoiler review. But then I realized how much I adore this show. And I need this show to be in the talks more of the town, really, as quote unquote. It's getting very overshadowed by the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And that is causing a lot of people not to be talking about this show enough. And I'm here now every, the next couple of weeks here on Fridays, to give you my spoiler thoughts on the brand new episodes of Invincible because I love this show too much. I adore this show. This is one of my favorite shows in years. It's some of my favorite superhero show I've seen maybe ever. It's a really great show. And this episode I thought was the best episode yet. It had a lot of superhero action, had a lot of quiet moments. It had a lot of Mark trying to balance being a human and being a, a vitramite. Um, you have Amber, who, uh, well, let's just get into the episode. So the main part of this episode is that invincible Mark Grayson has to team up with a criminal called Titan, who is voiced by Mahershala Ali, who he took down robbing a bank in episode one or two. I think it was one or two. Um, so now Mahershala Ali is in the show as Titan. And the first 10 minutes, very a montage of both people doing their own thing. Mark is saving the earth as uh, this guy is just trying to get money for his family. Um, He's a daughter who keeps going to that wellness center place. Um, he's obviously poor. And the idea of Mar of, of, of this, and not low life, but the fact that saving one person in this little town is beneath him. And that was the whole discussion of the episode. So as so Mark is trying to team up with Titan this episode. At the same time, he is continuously late to school. He is late to being on uh, Hangouts with Amber this episode. And I thought they really nailed it. It's very Peter Parker-esque where Peter was always used to be late seeing people, seeing MJ. But this show has nailed it the best. The idea of him, he wants to be a superhero, but he just, he's really into Amber. And you can really tell he's into Amber, but he still hasn't told, and he's going to have to tell her soon because he is late all the time. Um, he missed their family or her family dinner, which was really important to her. He keeps saving the day by giving her stuff. And she was like, it's run out of time. He's got to start making stuff. But that's where Eve kind of slid in. And we were, and what we were talking about uh, my last review of the show was this kind of being a love triangle. How earlier in the season, maybe the first two, three episodes, it felt like really the first three Mark, Eve, and Amber would be a love triangle. And I'm so happy they're not really going in that direction as Eve is really helping out Mark. Mark really needs a friend that knows what he's going through. And that's exactly what Eve is. Eve is a superhero who goes to the same high school. Now she has a lot of family issues as we saw this episode. Her dad, it was really rude to her, um, telling her that she needs to do this, this, and this. And she, she can do whatever the hell she wants. She's a superhero. If she wants to be, she can be a normal kid if she wants to be. And her forcefulness of that, I thought was well done. And then she has that conversation with Mark and then Amber shows up and Amber is planning on working at this, you know, I think it's like a homeless shelter or something. She does it like two or three days a week. It's like her second home is what she said. And that was a very nice um, humanity like um, move for the show to do is put her in that situation. So Eve joins along. Mark says he'll be there, but obviously he won't be there because um, he's doing this fight with Titan. But the, one of my favorite parts of the episode was this dinner scene between Mark, on um, man, and his mom, Debbie, that I thought was very well done. Mark basically, Debbie's in the mood because she realized now that she found that his old suit does have the has blood on it and makes it, she definitely feels like he killed the Guardians of the Globe, which, which we obviously know. But she was very down in this dinner scene. 
and Mark's describing what is going on. And Omni-Man keeps saying that this is beneath you. You're a planet saver, not a community saver. Very similar, you know, and how is that really much of a difference? And is that is the same thing of being a planet, uh, you know, saver and a community saver? Is that two different ways of being heroic or is one being heroic and one being beneath him? And the line of being beneath him really stuck with me emotionally. The fact that Mark has to contemplate I mean, Omni Man's role to, uh, telling him is you have to be the planet. You, you have to be the protector of Earth. You can't really worry about this one little thing, but that one little thing really teaches Mark a lot about being a superhero. It's not just about fighting aliens or stopping meteorites, it's helping people in need. And I felt like that was really explored really well. And his mom said, You got to sleep on him. Nothing is, be- saving people is nothing can be beneath you, Mark. And that one also worked. And then we have another fight between Debbie and Omni Man. Where Omni Man again continues to just say the wrong stuff around Debbie about being, you know, you don't know what's like being a hero. You're not, you're not a superhero. And she says, "Well, you, well, you came to Earth, and I taught you everything about this planet, everything about humanity on Earth." And he was like, "You're right." And that part was really great because this mother character is so good. Um, Debbie, vo- voiced by Sandra Oh. This is a character that in most superhero projects is a throwaway character or a character that's just there to do motivation. This character has so much complexity and depth. The idea of her husband and her son are both superheroes, but she has no powers whatsoever. And her fitting into their lives is so unique. And the fact that she they, that they both really do both still need her, even though she doesn't, she can't help with any fights or she can't can help with any superhero business, she can help them in life. And she really changed Omni-Man's life, as you can see. And you can tell that Mark values her opinion just as much as Omni-Man, even though if he sometimes doesn't want to, he you can tell that the value of what she says is really valuable to both characters. And I felt like they absolutely, even though she ca- I mean, clearly knows that Omni-Man killed the Gardens of the Globe, and we'll get more of that the next couple of weeks. Um, so we get that fight with Mark and time. They're about to break in to the mansion with the robot guy um, there. And we get, a, again, a, just a, a very shocking ending, very similar to the first episode. Majal was on the floor for the last 10 minutes of this episode, uh, not including post credits. And it's an episode that is so brutal and but it's brutal. It's emotionally brutal. It's obviously bloody and stuff is going on, but you really feel every punch that's committed in this last fight where this with this character who works for the rock guy, for not for the rock guy, for the machine. He kills two members of the new guardians of the globe, um, including Monster Girl, and he destroys Invincible. Invincible would have been dead, but because he's a Viltrumite, he isn't dead. Now, does that mean these guys can't die? I'm not sure. So he is alive at the end of this episode. But the main thing, again, two members of the Guardian of the Globe, and really the rest of the team kind of felt united because Invincible was killed, Monster Girl was killed, and really their leader was also killed in this fight to them at, the, at this point. So they kill off a lot of them. Um, one of them just leaves, and then the, the, the main villain of the episode, he goes to prison. But it turns out that Titan takes over this business. He, it's his new home. He has more money. And maybe was it worth it for Invincible to do this? That was the question you were thinking about ending the episode. Did it, was Invincible helping out this guy worth it? That's a great way to leave off the episode. But they really leave off the episode in a really good way with Invincible getting stretchered out, and he sees his dad. And we saw his dad glimpse of it, but his dad, Omni Man, watches this all happen. And he doesn't save Invincible. Nothing happened. He just stands there and watches. And he sees him for a quick sec. Then he turn, closes his eyes. Eyes come back. And then he's gone. So that really hit hard emotionally that he had no one to fall back on in this scene. And, um, and the fact that's why it's so crucial for him to have that relationship with Amber and he has to tell her at this point, he's made so many dumb excuses. He just has to come out and tell Amber what that he's invincible because, and I love the scene where everyone's getting called about invincible going to the hospital. And um, you have um, Adam Eve 
who is working with um, Amber in a really touching scene at that homeless shelter. And she gets the call and said, Mark loves you. Even though he's not here, he absolutely loves you. And that scene really did hit me hard emotionally. And it was really well done. So overall, guys, I really love this episode of Invincible. I really adore it. It's one of my favorite shows in years. Maybe my favorite superhero show I have ever seen. I really adore Invincible on Amazon Prime. The show needs to be getting talked about every single week on Prime. And I can't wait to keep talking about the next three weeks. So that's my review of episode five of Invincible. Please let me know your thoughts. If you can you please like the video, it's the best way to support this channel. Comment down below. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Do you also adore this show? And also subscribe, ring the bell. Some more videos coming out today by Falcon and Winter Soldier. Spoiler review will be coming out and my review of Thunder Force as well. So stay tuned for more videos on this Friday, April 9th, 2021. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys in a bit.